Hello, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James, and for this video, I start with a little bit of a demo. Both of these scopes have the same signal. However, one clearly shows a glitch, and the other does not. But if I do a little bit of waveform magic, the behavior is swapped. In this episode, we talk about the three most used acquisition modes in digital oscilloscopes. With that, let's go measure. Inside of a digital oscilloscope is an analog to digital converter connected to a memory controller. The ADC usually runs at a constant sample rate. If the controller outputs the data as is from the ADC, it is in sample mode. Sample mode can decimate the samples so that we get fewer samples for the waveform, which is very useful for slower sweep speeds. In other words, the scope might say 312 mega samples per second, but the ADC is still running at its max rate. Now, instead of throwing away those samples, peak detect mode checks for a max and min value. That way, if there is a glitch or peak between the waveform samples, then we can still see them on the scope. Coming back to the demo, the waveform generator outputs this arbitrary waveform that I made. It is two cycles of a sine wave with a single point glitch. The left scope uses sample mode and the right scope uses peak detect. The little glitch occurs between the ADC samples, which is why sometimes sample mode misses it. That signal is really slow, so we're definitely decimating the data, which is where peak detect shines. It works best to find high-speed transients on a slow signal. Here's a slightly different example. This square wave has a ton of random noise on it. The peak-to-peak -peak measurement shows 2.39 volts. When we change to peak detect and clear the measurements, now the peak-to-peak -peak is 2.3 or 2.4 volts. Wait, why are they the same? That example shows there aren't many significant peaks, so peak detect doesn't do much for us. Alternatively, if we zoom in enough, eventually peak detect gets disabled. At that fast sweep rate, the scope is already sampling at its max sample rate. So there's no value in doing peak detection anymore because we're seeing all of the dots that we captured anyway. Although I think this scope makes the peaks brighter so that we can visually see them. Basically, if your sample rate drops below the banner spec, then peak detect might be useful to help find noise and glitches. Now let's go in the other direction. Another popular mode lets us remove noise and glitches. Averaging multiple acquisitions together increases the accuracy, or is it precision? Accuracy is the representation, precision is the display. Anyway, it makes for a better measurement when it works. Back to the noisy square wave, let's switch to average mode with 16 averages. Wow, all of the noise is gone, and our peak to peak looks great. Except, notice the max value. If I slow the generator down to 10 Hz and clear the screen, you can see why. As the acquisitions get averaged together, the noise gets removed. But the scope measured that first peak to peak waveform, so the max stays, well, the max. Averaging requires a repetitive signal with a stable trigger. Now, before I address when is it useful, take a look at this mess of a waveform. It might look pretty cool, but what are we even seeing? This square wave has an FM modulation on it, which is a periodic deviation. The peak-to-peak -peak noise from earlier is random deviation, which averaging does a great job of removing. For comparison, let's look at that glitch sine wave on the multi-comp scope. You can kind of see the glitch, but you really have to want to because it's getting averaged out. Averaging requires a repetitive signal and a stable trigger. It removes random noise, but that means it can also hide seemingly random events. Now, some scopes have one more mode that we definitely need to cover. High resolution mode is like waveform averaging, but it can work on a single acquisition. Similar signal from before, but this time we're doing a different modulation. Changing from average to high resolution shows a sweeping frequency. But you might say, hey, this looks just like sample mode. Well, watch what happens to the noise when we switch to that mode. High resolution drops the effective sample rate, but it can handle that periodic change and reduces the random noise a little bit. It works by taking consecutive samples, averaging them together, and creating a new sample point. It's like a boxcar average that runs continuously, which is why it handles this particular signal better than averaging the entire waveform. Just like the other modes, this one works best if the fundamental signal is relatively slow compared to the ADC sample rate. 
averaging and high resolution increase the effective number of bits in the ADC system. Waveform averaging requires a repetitive signal, while high resolution does not. But to use high resolution, you need to be able to accept a slower sample rate. Two more points before we close. First, envelope mode draws the max and min values along with the actual samples in between. It is like peak detect and sample mode combined. It is helpful when visualizing noise or transients relative to the actual signal. And two, most digital oscilloscopes have sample, peak detect, average, and envelope modes. Check for them under the acquire or acquisition or ACK button. Remember, use sample or normal if you don't know what else to use. Peak detect to find glitches and averaging to get rid of noise on repetitive signals. Visit the Element 14 community to find show notes with links to application notes and the tools that I used in this video. Remember, that is the best place to ask me questions because I am more likely to see and answer them over there. Thank you for watching. For now, it is time for me to get back to peak detecting transients on my electronics workbench.